Welcome back to the nine Kindle experts share their secrets on the simplest way to make easy money with Kindle. I'm Eleanor, and today my guest is Tom Corson Knowles. And Tom is a serial entrepreneur, blogger, and international best selling author. He started his business at the age of 13. How old are you now, Tom? I'm 26. 26? Okay, manufacturing SAD lamps out of his dad's garage. By the time he graduated from the Indiana University Kelly School of Business at the age of 22, he was earning a full-time income from his first successful business, which he started in his dorm room. Tom then decided to share the keys to success he learned along his journey to becoming a financially independent entrepreneur through his books, videos, and seminars. And today he's teaching new and established authors and writers how to achieve incredible success by writing and selling ebooks on Amazon Kindle. Tom is the founder of ebookpublishingschool.com, a free video trading program for any writer or author who wants to learn how to successfully write, publish, and market their own, own ebooks. And he also is the founder of TCK Publishing, the premier ebook publishing firm that is leading the industry in providing advanced marketing support for clients. It's fine. The company's goal is to help every single client earn a full-time income as an author. TCK Publishing specializes in marketing or both fiction, for both fiction and non-fiction authors to help get their message and stories out to millions of readers all over the world. Tom's best-selling book includes the Kindle Publishing Bible, the Amazon Analytics Bible, Rich by 22, Facebook for Business Owners, How to Make Money with Twitter, and the Kindle Writing Book. I actually had the How to Make Money with Twitter. And it took a minute for me to realize <laughs> I was doing everything that, hey, I have that book. And then Tom is often quoted as saying, you can achieve all of your dreams through publishing ebooks if you're willing to master the three keys of authorship, writing, publishing, and marketing. So welcome, Tom. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Great. I'm excited that you, you joined us, too, for this summit. This, I've been enjoying all the different people I'm meeting and learning a lot about Kindle, and a lot of our guests also the same. But before I turn over the session to you, I have three questions that I, I've been asking everybody. And the um, first one is, is for would-be Kindle authors, which question, in your opinion, would be the best one for them to ask, ask you that would be beneficial for them? Well, I mean, there's one thing to ask an expert, but I think honestly, like the most important question you can ask is ask yourself: is why are you doing this? You know, why why do you want to write a book? What is the message you have to share with the world? Because if you're not totally clear on your message and what you want to do and why you're doing what you're doing, why you want to write a book, like if you're not totally crystal clear on that, then you'll never know what question to ask the experts because you'll you'll be going down like rabbit holes, you know, going different paths, trying different things, but not really sure what you want to do. So. I think first and foremost you have to understand, you know, why am I doing this? What is what is your why? Why do you get up in the morning? Why do you want to write your book? You know, what impact do you want to have? And a, a big question I ask myself is, you know, like if I had only 30 days left to live on this planet, you know, what book would I finish in that time period? What message would I have in that book? You know, what message would I leave with the world? And I think if you've got that down, if you understand why you're doing what you're doing, and you're totally clear on that, then nothing can stop you. And then you can go to an expert like me and say, well, how do I you know, upload to Kindle. How do I format my book? You know, those are the easy questions of how to do things. That's easy. And maybe you don't know it yet, but you can learn it. But if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, then all the how-tos in the world will never help you succeed. Uh, that is, that's a, <laughs> that's a good reason why. That's a good answer. I like that answer. Okay, so what is your perspective and strategy for success with Kindle? Well, I think uh, success on Kindle is, number one, like I just mentioned, having a message to share or a story to tell the world, that you have to be passionate about what you're doing. Um, but when it comes down to like hands-on strategies and tactics, you know, I focus on getting my books in front of readers. And you have to understand that people do not buy ebooks the way that they buy paperback and physical books anymore. They buy them in a completely different manner. And that means you have to market completely differently. So if you look at just Kindle right now, about 10%, maybe more, statistics is a few years old, of people have a Kindle device and buy Kindle books. So your, only, your market is only about 10% of the market. 
That means if you're doing massive media or advertising to the general public, 90% of your dollars and time is wasted marketing to people who cannot buy your book. Now, they can buy your book because you can read a Kindle on any smartphone, iPad, tablet, device, computer, anywhere in the world. But most people don't know that yet. So if you're doing advertising or media and you don't have the relationship to educate your customers, then you're wasting 90% of your money. So what I focus on is how do I get my books in front of those people who have the iPads, who have the Kindles, who have already downloaded the Kindle reading device and are actively buying books. And so we do that through SEO and search rankings and marketing and online marketing and all kinds of strategies. But it's totally different from what the traditional publishing industry does, which is this mass marketing, mass media. And I think the market's totally shifted right now. And so right now, as ebook sales are exploding, is the perfect time to be doing that different marketing strategy. And then as ebooks became more become more mainstream and where the majority of people are buying ebooks, then you can do the mass media and, the, and it's going to pay back. But right now what I'm seeing is people who spend a lot of money on advertising their ebooks, they're wasting most of their money. Yeah, I'm glad that you pointed that out. A couple of things that you pointed out there. For one, the Kindle app, like you said, not a lot of people know that they can actually download that. And when I first got my iPad about a year ago, I was really excited that I could. I stumbled across it. I think um, somebody actually told me, go go download it so you can get the book. So you're right, hardly anybody knows that. And another benefit of that too is because like, I have kids. Um, last year my stepson graduated from high school and in his English class or literature class, most of the year I was able to download all the ebooks that he needed and he used them on his phone. And then for some weird reason, towards the end of the year, they're like, no, he needs to bring either the book in or an iPad. And I'm like, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's you amazing. You buy an iPad, right? <laughs> yeah, it saved me a lot of money from going and buying a whole bunch of paperback books out throughout the whole year. So I love that point. And then I got sidetracked and totally forgot the other thing that you brought up that I liked because I started talking about the kids. But... Um, that's really that's really good. Oh, and yes, now I remember how you said it from different from traditional media. Um, I have a, 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 a an associate that's working right now with somebody who is um, launching a book, and <laughs> I, I'm not going to say who it, what it is or whatever. But what it is is that the the person who's launching the book has launched several books before, but it's an ebook. And they went to her for their her expertise and, and promoting and, and you know getting the book out there. But I've noticed that he is going through those channels of the old ways that mm -hmm. you're talking about. Don't necessarily wait. You're wasting your money on promoting your book. Yeah, if you're not really careful and and monetizing your marketing, and analyzing your marketing, tracking everything, uh, then you can throw thousands of dollars away on a book launch or advertising, and uh, you find out a lot of it's been wasted. So I've I've tested, I mean, everything, like everything I could think of for marketing. And honestly, the best marketing strategies that I've found so far are totally free. You know, they take a little bit of work, a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of time and creativity, uh, but it doesn't cost you any money. And I think that's, you know, that's been a key to my success so quickly. Cool. Okay. So now my last question for you is, what net <laughs> can't talk today. What networking resources did you cultivate to achieve success with Kindle? Uh, a lot. <laughs> when I, I mean, this has been, you know, like a seven-year journey for me. I mean, I wrote my first book when I was 19, and I had no idea how to get my message out there with the world. And so I tried publish, contacting publishers, and I found out you had to have an agent, so I tried contacting agents. You know, I've tried everything. And then, you know, after failing miserably to go the traditional publishing route after years, uh, someone mentioned, you know, offhand, why don't you just publish it on Kindle? So I started researching everything I could. I read every blog article I could. I had like stacks and stacks of, of physical books and ebooks on, on publishing. Like Dan Pointer, I mean, I mean, I've read almost every book by Dan Pointer, an incredible guy, um, and really one of the leaders of like the old model of, of publishing. But what I noticed when I was reading all these books and doing all the research was that everyone was saying different things about the future, and everyone was kind of had this concern about ebooks and how that would change the market. And I, I realized, like, this is a big thing. And most of these books were years old. So, you know, they were predicting things out many years in advance. And then when I looked at the data on how many books are selling right now on, on Kindle, like $4 billion this year in the United States alone, uh, I got really excited. And I realized, like, this is a huge opportunity. 
And so I started, I went out there, I just started publishing my books, writing my books. I went out in terms of networking, I found editors and, you know, cover designers. You know, I, I started interviewing attorneys, talk about copyrights and things like that. Um, you know, accountants, just typical business stuff to, to get advisors on your team who can uh, help you. And what I really was looking for is people who have experience in the industry. So even though I'm focusing on ebooks and I'm kind of the new guy in the industry, and I'm doing something that most people aren't doing, I wanted to get advice from the old school experts, like the like my attorney is a guy who's been working with old school publishers, but as well, you know, the, f the future is now, right? He's also working with with ebook publishers too. So I wanted that kind of wide uh, array of expertise on my team so that I could learn from people and not make the same mistakes that a lot of people have been making over over you know many years. Oh, great, perfect. Okay. So thanks for answering all my questions. <laughs> I pretty much put everybody through those three questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to you. I'm going to mute myself so there's no noise in the background. And um, if you need me, I'll just just me a second and I'll come back on. So okay, great. I'm looking forward to hearing your presentation. Great. All right, so I'm going to do screen share here. Okay, so let me know if you can see the presentation. Yes, you can see the presentation. Okay, awesome. All right, so hey guys, it's Tom Corsimals, and right now I'm going to share with you how I started earning $10,000 a month with my Kindle eBooks within one year of publishing my first book. I'm going to show you how you can do it too. So this right here uh, is just a dream come true for me. I wrote my first book when I was 19 years old. And I called the book Rich by 22, and I wrote it because at that time in my life I was a broke college student, and I was looking at what my friends in the business school were doing, and most of them were going to Wall Street, and they were working internships or, or jobs after they graduated on Wall Street, and they were working 100, something 110 hours a week, uh, and they were killing themselves. They were working so hard they were killing themselves literally, and I, I received a call from a friend and she was in tears. She was saying, I, was work I worked 108 hours this week. I haven't had time to sleep, eat, work out, or take care of myself in any way, not let alone have any kind of social life. And that call freaked me out. I it was really a big wake-up call for me. And I realized that, look, if I don't change something like right now, I'm going to spend the rest of my life hating myself, killing myself, working too hard in a job like that. And so I did everything I could to achieve wealth and achieve success and freedom. And so I started a business, and by the time I graduated, I had a full-time income. I didn't need to look for any kind of job. I didn't go to Wall Street, thank God. I'm so grateful for that. Uh, but, you know, I wrote this book when I was 19 because it was, it was all about, you know, what do I have to do to achieve success? What does success mean to me? And honestly, I only wrote the book for me. I didn't write the book, you know, to become rich or famous or a best-selling author. I just wrote the book for me to really clarify, you know, my message and what I had. It was really a message to myself. And I shared it with a few friends and family, and they loved it. Everyone encouraged me to go try to get it published traditionally. And I tried that. I tried to get it published traditionally. I went to the big publishers, and they told me, look, you, you can't publish with us. You have to have an agent. I went to my agents, and they said, look, this book isn't really marketable, and blah, 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 blah. Long story short, it didn't work out the traditional route. So this book sat on my shelf for five years until uh, you know, a friend of mine just offhandedly mentioned, why don't you just go publish, publish it on Kindle? Just self-publish it. It's really easy. So I did all the research I could. I got every book I could find, did all the research, published my book on Kindle, and within 12 months, I had my first $12,000 a month in Kindle royalties alone. Now, that's just Kindle royalties. It doesn't include paperback sales. It doesn't include affiliate commissions. It doesn't include anything else. That's just royalties from only the Kindle eBooks. And <laughs> at that point, I realized, like, this is something huge. And uh, so I'm going to share with you how I did that and how you can, too. So now this is, is a picture right here of me and Robert Kiyosaki, one of my huge mentors. He actually read his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, when I was 19 years old, right before I wrote my book, Rich by 22. And that book was a huge wake-up call for me. It totally inspired me, totally changed my life, changed how I viewed the world and how I viewed money. And I'll just give you an example of that. I, at that time, I was very uh, skeptical of the world. I was very cynical about the world. And I looked at the world, and one of my big passions in life is the environment. I'm really passionate about the environment, you know, creating sustainability so that my children and grandchildren, future generations, 
can enjoy the earth and the beauty all around us that I enjoy. And I looked at the world and I said, look, where are the, our major environmental problems coming from? And most obviously is big business. You know, big business is polluting and things like that. And so in my mind at that young age, I associated business and money with damaging the environment and being a bad thing. And when I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, it, it woke me up and it made me realize, look, money's just a tool. And you can use money for good or bad. And I realized, look, if I had a billion dollars right now, I would do good things for the world. I would buy land that's been damaged and I'd rehabilitate it. I would do great things and invest in research to help the world to create a more sustainable future for our children and future generations. And that, when I read that book, it totally changed my life, changed the course of my life completely. And so to be next to the best-selling list with Robert Kiyosaki as one of the top 100 business authors on Amazon, I mean, that is a complete dream come true for me. And I, I never could have imagined it just a few years ago. So I want you to understand, whatever your dream is as an author, you can achieve it too. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So this right here is a graph of Kindle books sold on Amazon versus physical books sold. And you'll see uh, the yellow line was kind of steady growth is physical books sold on Amazon. And you can see they've had some great steady growth with their, with their physical books. But that orange line right there looks like a hockey stick is Kindle eBooks sold on Amazon. And it is booming. They, they now sell way more books, about two Kindle eBooks for every physical book sold on Amazon right now. And the number is growing very, very quickly. But as a business professional, as a business person, I understand numbers. And I understand that, look, just because they're selling more eBooks does not mean they're making more money from eBooks versus physical books. And that's a really big distinction. So I did more research and I looked at what does what does the average person in the United States spend on eBooks versus physical books? So right now, this is the 2013 U.S. book market estimates. There's going to be about $15 billion in physical book sales this year in the United States and over $4 billion in eBook sales. So as you can see, right now, physical books are the big piece of the pie. eBooks are about 25%. Um, so that's in terms of dollars spent of the market, right? But by 2016, it's going to be a huge, huge shift in the market where ebooks are going to surpass physical books in sales. So ebooks are going to more than double in sales in the next three years. So let me ask you this. If you're an author, where do you want to be right now? Do you want to have physical books or do you want to have ebooks? Because all the growth in the market right now is in ebooks. And audiobooks are growing as well, but they're still a very, very small percentage of the market. So I think the, the audiobook growth boom is a few years off. But right now, it's all about ebooks. That's where the growth is in the market. And that's why I focus on ebooks, and I've had so much success with it. That's why my publishing clients, we only focus on ebooks. We do publish physical books, but when it comes to making money, we know that the money is in the ebooks right now. And that was, those numbers I just showed you, that was just the United States market. It does not count other markets. So Amazon right now has different stores in different markets, like Amazon.co.uk is the United Kingdom store. And right now, we're seeing with our clients about 10% of our Kindle sales are from the UK. Now, the UK is the next biggest market. And then there's Canada, there's Japan, there's Brazil. There's lots of other big markets. But what I want you to understand is that that huge growth curve right now in, in ebook sales in the United States is going to be followed by other countries over the next three to five years. So you're going to see countries like, Amazon, like India uh, and Brazil become really, really huge in the ebook market over the next couple of years. So right now is the perfect time to get in while the United States market is exploding after that United States growth is, is exploding, is done, it's going to continue to grow, but not as incredibly rapidly, you're still going to see massive, massive growth spurts in other countries. So it's the perfect time right now to get your books out there and get yourself positioned to take advantage of all this growth, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And really, e-books are the future. I mean, this is a great picture right here. It's a stack of huge books versus a little Kindle reader that I use. Now, I traveled recently on a three-month trip to Asia, and I didn't take a gigantic stack of books with me. I took my little Kindle with me, and I had a 1,000 books on my Kindle. So, And not only that, but uh, since I had 3G, I could download books in, in Thailand. Anytime I wanted in Thailand, I could just turn it on, download any kind of book I wanted any time of day. Now, that is so much more convenient than the old model of physical books. And I'm not saying physical books are obsolete. I love reading physical books. I know people are always going to continue to buy physical books. But in terms of convenience... Ebooks are the future of convenience. And look at us. We are a fast food nation. We are a fast food world. We love convenience. Everyone's going to McDonald's and fast food chains. Why? It's not because it's good for you. It's because it's easy and it's convenient. Ebooks are easy and convenient, and that's why their sales are growing so, so rapidly.
not only that, but like everyone has a Kindle. They sold five million plus Kindle Fires in the first nine months of it launching. And I'm telling you, like they didn't sell Kindle Fires because they were a better iPad. They sold Kindle Fires because they were an ebook reader that had some cool features. That's something really important to know. It's all about ebooks. They've sold millions and millions of Kindle devices now. And not only can people who have a Kindle device read your ebooks on Kindle, but anyone who has a smartphone, a tablet, a computer can download the free Kindle reading software and read your book anywhere in the world. So really, the market is now saturated. I mean, anyone, anyone in the world can read an e a Kindle ebook as long as they have access to internet and a computer or a smart device. So more than 10% of Americans right now currently read Kindle ebooks, and the number is growing very, very rapidly. So it's all about the money as a publisher, as an author. Like you want to know how am I going to make money at this? Well, with a traditional publisher, here's how it works. You sell a $25 hardcover book with a traditional publisher, and you're lucky if you make $2 of royalties every copy you sell. But as a self-published ebook author, you're earning $2 royalties on a $2.99 ebook. That's huge. You're making more in royalties on a $2.99 ebook than you do from a $25 hardcover book. So let me ask you, do you think it's easier to sell a $2.99 book or a $24.99 book? I'm telling you, it's a lot easier to sell a $2.99 ebook, and uh, you're going to learn how right now. So step one is you have to write your book. Uh, I've, I've talked to local authors groups, and I've talked to seminars and live events, and uh, the biggest challenge I see that people have is how do I finish my book? How do I write my book? Uh, and honestly, the biggest obstacle I've seen most authors have is perfection. Perfection is your enemy. Uh, I've seen people who've, who've rewritten a book, a novel, for 10 years and have rewritten it 40, 50, 60 times and have not published the book, have not gone out there and taken the work and put it on the market. And I want you to understand, look, if you're a new author, if you're working on a book right now, it doesn't need to be huge. You don't need to write the world's next Harry Potter right now. You can start small and grow. That's exactly what I did. You can start small, publish something small, and then grow and do more advanced work and more advanced publishing. But, you know, 10,000 words, which is about 40 pages, is fine for a short ebook. Whether it's nonfiction or you want to write a short story, no problem. You can start with something small like that. You can write it in a relatively short period of time, publish it very quickly, and then get feedback. You can have readers reading your work, critiquing you, saying, you know, here's some things I think you should work on. That's one of the amazing things about Amazon and Amazon reviews is that you'll have these amazing top reviewers on Amazon that you can email, contact them, ask them to review your work. They'll do it for free because they love to read books. And they'll give you amazing advice on your writing and how you can improve. That's stuff you cannot get as an unpublished author. So not only are you making money, but you're making money while you're learning how to become a better author. And that's really the secret to success. That's what worked for me so well. So another big distinction here is do you want to be a best-selling author or a best writer? And uh, that's a big distinction. So the sooner you can get your book done, the more you can sell. And Robert Kiyosaki mentions in one of his books, look, he's not a best, the best writer in the world, but he is a number one best-selling author, and it's a big difference. So you can always update your book or come out with a second edition. If there's typos, if there's mistakes, if there's errors, if things change in the future, you can always update it like that. And instantly, within a couple hours, your book would totally updated. Whatever mistakes or errors you made, totally gone and will never be seen again. That's huge. So don't be so afraid of making a mistake when you write your book. Don't, don't be so afraid of having it be perfect right away. You can always improve it and update it after the book is published. So step two is editing. Editing is key. And if you want to compete with the professionals, you need a professional team. That means a good editor at the very least. So having a great editor is just huge. One of the biggest mistakes most self-published authors make is they don't have an, a really good editor on their team. And so you see massive amounts of typos and errors, all kinds of things um, that just a little bit of editing could fix up right there. So I, I love to say, look, writing is the only art in the world. It is the only art anywhere in the world that you can have someone help you do it even better. You know, if you're a painter and you're painting a canvas, you can't have a coach come in and say, hey, look, you messed up these lines here and have them paint the brush strokes for you. That's not how art works. But in the art of writing, you can. You can have an editor come and help you make your work even better and help polish it up and make it really shine and sparkle. So I highly recommend you have to have an editor if you're serious about making money from ebooks or publishing any kind of book. All right, so the third step, you've written your book, you've got it edited, your book is 
almost ready to publish. The next thing you need to do is you need to format it for Kindle. So it's really simple. I just use Microsoft Word. Uh, you can format your book in about 30 minutes. If it's a short book, maybe two hours if it's a really, really long novel. Um, but really, really quickly you can do it. And I'm not going to go into detail right here, but if you go to ebookpublishingschool.com, you'll get an entire free video training course where I'll show you step by step how to format your books for Kindle. It's really, really simple and really, really easy. So you can go there after this presentation and get your free training if you want to do it yourself. Now step four is cover design. Look, your cover and title sell your book more than anything inside the book itself. And right here you see two pictures. One of this is the Kindle Writing Bible, which is one of my books, and the other one is called Questions That Easily Write Books. Now, the problem here with, with the cover on the right is that when it's thumbnail size on Amazon, which it's always going to be when a reader looks at a book, they're browsing the bestseller list, they type in a search term, you're always going to see a thumbnail of the cover. And at thumbnail size, the cover on the right, questions that easily write books, you cannot read anything on the cover, and you do not know what the cover is. As the cover on the left, the Kindle Writing Bible, when you look at it at thumbnail size, you can at least read the title. You know it says the Kindle Writing Bible. This is huge. The number one thing you want with an ebook e cover, doesn't matter how pretty it looks, how good it looks, whatever. If you cannot read the title at thumbnail size, you are going to dramatically reduce your conversions and reduce your sales on Kindle. So make sure that whatever ebook cover you have, when you shrink it to a 60 pixel width by 90 pixel, pixel height, um, when you shrink it to that size, 60 by 90, you better be able to read the title. If not, you need to redo the cover until you can read the title at that size because you're missing out on a lot, a lot of sales. Okay, so here's a pro tip of the day. Like I just said, Always design your cover so that you can easily read the title at 60 by 90 pixels. Have your designer test it, test it yourself, make sure you can read it when it's a very small size because that's what people are reading and looking at when they're browsing on their Kindles and looking on Amazon.com. Now, here is an incredible case study of a man named Haldeman Julius who was a publisher in the early 1900s. And he uh, sold hundreds and hundreds of millions of books. It was incredibly successful. But what he noticed was that titles are key to selling good books. If you don't have a good title, you're not going to sell books. doesn't matter what's in the book, the title is so important, has a huge effect on sales. So when his books weren't selling, he would change the title. So one of his books called The Art of Controversy had zero sales, not one sale an entire year for this book. He changed the title to How to Argue Logically and sold 30,000 copies the next year. How's that for a huge sales increase from one little change? Uh, the next book, The King Enjoys Himself, sold 8,000 copies one year, and the next year he changed it to The Lustful King Enjoys Himself and sold 38,000 copies. Another book, The Mystery of the, Man, the, Mystery of the Iron Mask, sold 11,000 copies. He changed it to The Mystery of the Man in the Iron Mask and sold 30,000 copies. So these are just a few examples. Uh, you can go see all of Haldeman and Julius' case studies online if you look it up. But some really key points I want you to understand here about titles is, first of all, make sure that the book delivers a promise. If it's nonfiction or delivers some mystery, intrigue, suspense, if it's fiction. So the first title is, is a nonfiction book, Art of Controversy. Look, I don't want to study Art of Controversy. I don't know what it's about. And because that, that title itself causes confusion in my mind, I'm not going to buy it. But when the title is called How to Argue Logically, I know immediately, in half a second, that that book is going to teach me how to argue logically. And if I'm an attorney, if I like to argue, if I'm an intellectual person, I might buy it. But Art of Controversy, no one bought it. And there's a reason, because the title was poorly chosen. So make sure if it's a nonfiction book that your title delivers a promise and lets people know what the book is about and what they're going to get from reading it. And if the title itself doesn't do that, make sure that the subtitle does. So sometimes you can have like a, like a funny title or a catchy title but make sure that the subtitle explains very clearly for a nonfiction book why people should buy it, what they're going to get from it. Now for the fiction stuff, make sure that your titles are interesting, intriguing, lustful. One word, lustful, dramatically increased sales by over four times. Another one, just putting in the words, the man, increased sales. And why is this? Because people love sex, right, lustful. Um, you look at all the magazines. Look at magazines. Magazines are a great way to do research on what sells ebooks. Look what they're putting in magazines. Look at the words they're using. Look at the pictures they're using. Right? Sex sells. We all know that. Um, don't be afraid to use it when it's appropriate. 
Now, the next one, The Mystery of the Man in the Iron Mask, that sold more copies because people care about stories about people, not about things. Like, I don't care about iron masks, but a mystery of the man in the iron mask, maybe I care about that man. Maybe, who is he? Why is he wearing the mask, right? It, asks, it, it just poses so many more questions and so much more intrigue when you're talking about people versus talking about things. So book titles are very important. Invest the time to come up with multiple book title ideas and get advice and feedback from strong marketers and business people. Don't ask other authors what's a good book title because they don't know. Ask good marketers what's a good book title because they understand what sells. And book titles are all about getting a book title that's going to sell your book. Okay, so step five, getting your book published on Kindle. But honestly, it takes more time to explain it than to actually do it. It's really simple. Um, there are a lot of points you need to know about like digital rights management and keyword selection, you know, writing a good book description, what categories to choose, all that stuff. Um, there's a lot to know, but it's a really simple process. I didn't know any of that when I first started. You can go to kdp.amazon.com. If you have an Amazon account, it, it, you can just sign in, or you have to create a new Amazon account if you don't have one. You fill out your bank account info. Uh, your account will be verified, and then you can upload your book right away. It will be live within a week. So you can right now upload a file to Kindle, have it live within a week. It's it's a really simple process. And again, ebookpublishingschool.com will teach you, walk you through the process if you're interested. Now, step six um, is KDP Select free promotions. This is the heart of my marketing strategy for a lot of my clients and a lot of my books. So, KDP Select is a 90 day exclusive contract with Amazon for your ebook. So, it's an exclusive contract, which means you cannot publish it anywhere else. You can't sell it on your website. You can't sell it on Barnes & Noble or Kobo or iBooks, only on Amazon for 90 days. So you can cancel the end of 90 days or you can renew. It's up to you. Now what they do is they allow you to give your book away for free for five days. Now you might think, I don't want to give my, away my book for free, but I'm telling you, look, if you're a first time author, you don't have a following, you don't have a massive email list, you don't have millions of people who know who you are and want to buy what you have, then you better give your book away for free because otherwise no one is going to be talking about your book. Right? Unless you want to go spend thousands of dollars on advertising and media where only 10% of those people can actually buy your book anyways, then you know, unless you want to throw your money away like that, then you better give your book away for free because it doesn't cost you anything and you're getting your message out there and you're getting word of mouth going, which is the number one reason books sell, by the way, is word of mouth. It's not SEO or marketing or advertising. It's all about word of mouth. So in my personal experience with our books, we've had anywhere from 657 to over 22,000 free downloads in that five-day period. So you're looking at hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of people reading your book within just one week, in less than a week. Now, seven days after the free promotion ends, we normally get anywhere from 550 to actually over 2,000 sales. We've had some books do over 2,000 sales within a week after uh, that promo. That number is kind of out of date there. But again, I want you to understand that word of mouth marketing is, is the number one reason books sell. So using KDP Select to get do a free promotion is, is an incredible way to get word of mouth out there to get people reading your book and telling their friends about it. It's a great way to get sales, especially for new authors. Even for me, I still do a lot of free promotions because I want to get my message out there to more people. And you have to realize, look, there's seven billion people on this planet, and in a couple of years, most of them will be buying eBooks on Kindle. So you have to understand, with billions of people buying eBooks, who cares if 20,000 people get your book for free? There's still going to be a couple billion more people who can buy it. All right, so here's a book marketing exercise I want you to do. Write down the last five books you read. Right now, write down the last five books you have read. Uh, what was it? What were the titles? Um, if you don't remember the titles, just write down what the book was about. But then I want you to write, you know, how did you hear about this book? Did someone tell you about it? Was it in advertising? Did you see it online? Did you search for something on the topic? Why did you buy them? Why did you buy those books? And have you told anyone else about the book? Have you recommended it to a friend? Have you said, hey, you got to go check out this book? Now, when I ask this question at seminars and events, all the time, the vast majority of books, someone bought them because they heard about it from a friend, and they told someone else about it as well. That's how books are sold, word of mouth. This exercise just goes to prove it to you. But I just wanted you to understand why free promotions are so important, because you need that word of mouth. And it's a free way to get a massive amount of word of mouth going for you. Okay, so step seven is marketing. Now, there's a list of sites for your free promotions that, again, you'll get for free in ebook publishing school. Um, I'm not going to go through that here, but basically there are dozens and dozens of sites that will promote your book for free to their audience of people who want to download books when they're free. Now, another big strategy I use to get free downloads is Facebook groups for Kindle authors. So um, let's say, for instance, you have a book on gardening. 
um, well, first of all, there's Facebook groups for Kindle authors, which actually just groups for Kindle authors to connect with each other. You know, they can review each other's books and give you advice and things like that. So it's a great way to connect with other authors. Um, it's really awesome. But in terms of groups in your market, this is huge. So if you have a book on gardening, look on Facebook for groups and about gardening. Join those groups, and then when your book is free, say, "Hey guys, you know, I thought you'd love to know my book on gardening is free right now, only for the next five days. Grab your copy. It's just my gift to the group. Hope you guys enjoy it." That is an amazing way to get massive word of mouth and massive amounts of downloads and free traffic to your book. It works very well. It works in every market. So whatever your book's about, find groups on Facebook that are similar to your market, similar to your book, that love, would love your book. Give it to them for free. They will love you, and you will get a lot of downloads and become probably become a bestseller if you do it right. And then Twitter is another huge way to do it. So I want you to understand you have to give people what they want first and then give them what they need. This is the key to marketing. You see, what most authors do is they write a great book, and they think, well, because my book is so good, everyone's just going to want to buy it. So you publish it without thinking about the title, without thinking about promotion, without thinking about strategy, without thinking about social media, all these things that you don't think about that really are what cause books to sell because you think your book is so good it's going to sell itself, but it's not. So you have to give people what they want first, then give them what they need. So what they need is your book, the information inside it. But what they want is what you must give them, that's coming up with the right title, the right book cover, and the right marketing strategy. So marketing is the number one key to success. It's the most important of, the, of all processes of publishing because there are millions of writers and hundreds of millions of books that do not sell. Right? You know you probably, maybe you self-published a book yourself that didn't sell very well. Maybe you know some friends who are authors who published books that didn't sell very well. But look, if you're not going to invest the time and money into marketing your books, you better partner with someone who will because it's the most important key to success. I, I studied from T. Harbecker, who's the number one best-selling author and has done incredible seminar, this incredible seminar company all over the world he's created. And he says, look, 80% of any business success is marketing. The rest is like administration and operations, but that's a very small percentage. 80% of your success is marketing. So if you're not spending 80% of your time and effort and energy on marketing, you're not going to become a best-selling author. You're not going to sell a lot of books. Okay, so step eight is write more ebooks. So number one key to success is writing more. Um, this is true. Look, look at authors like Stephen King. Look at authors who have sold millions and millions and millions of books. Paulo Coelho. They all write lots of books. Like there are very few authors who have one-hit wonders, right? I mean, there are a few of them. They're very few. Most serious professional authors who earn full-time incomes or millions of dollars or more in royalties, they write lots of books. Remember before I talked about perfection is your enemy? Look, Stephen King almost threw out his book, Carrie. He threw the manuscript for the book, Carrie, in the trash can, and his wife took it out of the trash can before it went, and went to the landfill, took it out, put it back on the desk, and said, look, this is a great book. You just need to finish it up. You can do it. It's going to be an amazing book. And that book went on to make Stephen King incredibly famous, incredibly popular, incredibly wealthy. So don't throw out your books. Publish them. Uh, you know, don't worry about getting the two perfect. Publish them. Get your message out there. Get some feedback. Improve on it over time. You know, no great success happens overnight. So if you're willing to work at it, if you're willing to, to get your message out there, if you're willing to constantly improve, you can be successful. So one author I was looking at recently at, at the best-selling authors on Kindle, like the top 100 of all time best-selling authors on Kindle, and one of them has over 128 ebook novels and short stories on Kindle right now. Now, none of those books sell really, really well. None of those books are six-figure books, not even close. But combined, she earns almost a million dollars a year. It's very close to a million dollars. Um, I've checked all her stats on Kindle, and I'm guessing her income is very high six-figure with 128 novels Now remember, and, and short stories, right? And so remember, none of these books sell incredibly well, but she's got a lot. I'm not saying you need to write 100 books to be successful, but I'm saying that, look, you need to be persistent. And if you're a serious writer, if you're a serious professional, you're going to write multiple books. So get them published, get them out there, and keep working. Okay, now step nine is totally optional. You can sign a publishing deal. So for some of you, uh, you, will, you don't think the self-publishing route is right for you. Maybe you don't want to deal with the technical stuff. Um, look, you can always sign a publishing deal. But my recommendation from, to most authors is, look, go ahead and self-publish first. You can always sign a publishing deal later because it's a lot easier to get a deal with thousands of readers uh, than zero. So if you've got a book out there, you've got thousands and tens of thousands of free downloads uh, in some sales, 
any publisher is going to take you more seriously than an author with a book who has nothing. No sales, no history, no following. It's just common sense. So why not make some money while you're waiting for the deal to come through? Okay, now here's how traditional publishing works. Basically, you have two options. So option A is you sign with a big publisher. You work with one of the big six publishers, and here's how it works. Look, you must have an agent or you have no chance of getting published. They do not take uh, submissions except through agents. So you have to have an agent. So you're really, if, if you want to go a traditional publishing route, your first step is you've got to get an agent. So research the agents who specialize in books in your genre or your niche. Um, get your list together. Contact them. Be persistent. Pound them. You know, it takes a lot of work to get there, but you can do it if you're really persistent. You have to understand that the publisher is only going to pay you 10 to 17 percent royalties. So they're paying you a very small percentage of royalties. And out of that percentage that you're earning from the publisher, you have to pay the agent 15 to 25 percent. So you're earning, you know, if you still look at the numbers, it's obvious here, you're earning less um, for the person writing the book than the publisher and the agent. You're just earning a lot less, right? I mean, so the numbers just are not in your favor in this range. Now, the benefit of that is you can get massive distribution in all the bookstores if there are really any left. Um, you're going to get a lot of media exposure if you're lucky, if, if you're one of the key clients, so they're going to give you a lot of media exposure. Um, so there can be some big benefits to going to a traditional publisher. Um, you might get an advance. Uh, you can get a pretty significant advance depending on how good your platform and following is. But really what, what big publishers are looking for, they're looking for authors with books in hot markets that have potential to sell a lot and authors who have huge followings, huge platforms. Now a platform is a group of people who love you and love your work and will buy whatever you have to sell. So for instance, T. Harv Eker has this seminar company and where he has tens of thousands of people in rooms every year where he's speaking to them, actually probably hundreds of thousands of people. And if he at the front of the room says, hey, look, I got a book, why don't you go ahead and buy it if you want it? You know, a lot of those people are going to buy his book. He has access to millions of people who will probably buy his book if he recommends it to them. If you don't have that, it's very hard to get an advance, let alone any kind of significant advance from a publisher. So that's traditional option A. Now option B is you can go with an independent publisher. So typical price range is often $3,000 to $5,000 or more depending on your package, what kind of options you want and how many books you're ordering uh, when you go that route. So you have to understand you get little to no marketing support with most of these companies. Sometimes they'll have like a marketing package um, that's going to cost you a couple extra grand. Um, and you very rarely get advice or guidance like from a professional who's going to tell you like I've been through this before I, I know where you are I'm an author too um, it's very rarely like that they don't they don't have that kind of advice for you um, so you're really just getting the publishing deal and you're paying for it uh, and you often have to stockpile inventory of your books in your garage or whatever until you sell them yourself when you're doing if you're speaking at live events or things like that you can sell your books um, you know but you have to invest in the inventory and hold all the inventory for you. Um, so that's really the only two options most authors have. And when I looked at these options, I said, look, these are horrible. Um, and the, the third option, of course, you can always still publish, which is great. Um, but in terms of getting a publisher, these are your main options. They're not very good. So I decided to create a third option for people. Um, I call it TCK Publishing is the company. And this company really started because I had so much success with my own ebooks that I had all my friends and colleagues and people um, who were authors who had books say, hey, look, why don't you publish my book for me? Can you help me out here? Um, and so I tried a few people, and I wanted to test and just see. Look, like, I know it works for me, um, but I want to see if, if the same marketing strategy will work for my clients. And it has. It worked incredibly well. And uh, we now have over 30 clients. Uh, we're growing very quickly. And uh, you know, we use the same ebook marketing strategy that I uh, talked about here in this video. So um, with TCK Publishing, it's a really simple process. First of all, you just complete your, your manuscript, complete your book, and get it done, get it ready to publish and we do everything else. We do everything else. So all you have to worry about is writing books. So this is a great partnership. If you're the kind of writer who just wants to write, you love to write, you don't want to deal with technical stuff, you don't want to deal with the marketing, you just want to focus on writing, we'll do the rest of the stuff for you. Now we'll also do your book launch for you. We'll guide you through our step-by-step -step best selling ebook marketing system. And basically how it works is we do as every single piece of marketing that we can as the publisher we will do for you. But there's a lot of marketing that, that only the author can do. So as an example here, if I'm, pretend that I'm a reviewer or a book reviewer or a blogger, I don't want to hear from the publisher. I do not care about the publisher. I want to hear from the author. Readers and reviewers and experts 
and bloggers and the media, they don't care about the publisher, they want to hear from the author. That's why we'll give you our step-by-step -step formula for, you know, here's how you contact reviewers, here's how you contact the media, here's how you get the interviews, all the stuff you need to do to market your book. We'll give you that system step-by-step -step and say, go ahead and do it. It only takes most of our clients about eight hours per book launch. It's all the, mark all the work they have to do on marketing. We do the rest for you. So it's a really awesome partnership. And here's our mission statement. It's to build a sustainable ebook publishing company that helps as many authors as possible fulfill their dreams. I've already achieved my dreams of having financial freedom and becoming a best-selling author. Uh, you know, I didn't want this company to be about me. I wanted it to be about you. I, I made this company because I, I know there are people out there with messages to share. You have a message or story to share with the world. I want to help get it out there. That's why this company exists to help you fulfill your dreams for authors who don't want to go the self-publishing route or don't like the traditional publishing options. And now I want to understand, look, when it comes to publishing for us, it's all about finding the right partner. We want to make sure you're going to be a good fit. Like, so we don't just take any client off the street. We want to make sure that we're creating a long-term win-win partnership. And I'll be honest with you here. I want this to be like a lifelong thing. I want it to be a lifelong relationship. I would love to publish all your books or most of your books, whatever is a good fit for us. Uh, and I want to create long-term success. Like, our, like uh, Eleanor mentioned, our goal is to help all of our clients earn a full-time income from royalties. And that doesn't not something that happens overnight. Yes, I had success personally very, very quickly with Kindle, but it doesn't happen to everyone that way. You might not have my work ethic. You might not be in the right market. You might There might be all kinds of options. But I guarantee you, if you stick with it, if you keep writing books, if you keep on marketing, if you follow the system that we have in place for you, you will be very, very successful over the long term. So that's what we want. And we're really looking for professional authors who love to write and who have a great message and story to share with the world. So really, it's a great partnership. We want to work with each other's strengths so that we can go even farther together. Like We focus on marketing. That's what I love to do. Every day I get up, I read books on marketing. I love marketing. I've been studying marketing since I was 19 in business school. Uh, it's just my passion. I love the idea of how do you take an idea, how do you take a message and get it out there to the world? How do you find people who connect and resonate with that message? So if you've got a book on, on health and wellness, how to teach people how to lose weight and stay healthy at the same time, like how do we get that message out there? That's what I love to do. That's what that's the challenge that I love, uh, and and we've done very very well with that. So here are some success stories um, from clients of TCK Publishing. So here is Will Cook. Now, uh, okay, I have to explain to you. This is a this is a screenshot of the Amazon bestsellers list uh, on Kindle. So um, so the red arrows are pointing to each of the important parts um, in the book. So at the top left there. Um, this book, Container Gardening by Will Cook, is the number one best-selling book in urban gardening on Kindle. Number two is this book called Urban Gardening, which is the number two best-selling book. Number three is Indoor Gardening by Will, which is the number three best-selling book. So right now, at one point in time, Will had the number one, number two, and number three best-selling books in gardening. Uh, not only that, but on the right side of the page, you'll see hot new releases. Um, that's books that have been published in the last 30 days the best-selling books that are brand new. Um, he has the number one hot new release there. And then for top rated books, he has the number two top rated book in gardening books. So uh, Will just completely dominates uh, the best-selling list in the gardening on Kindle um, as one of our clients. So so this is the kind of, some of the kind of success that we've had. And that's kind of how um, the screenshots look of bestsellers on Amazon. They're organized one, two, three. On the top right, you have hot new releases, which are new books that are selling really well. And under that, you'll usually have top rated, which are books that have the most five-star reviews, um, you know, the best reviewed books. So, I mean, the readers really, really like the book because it's got so many five-star reviews. Okay, next we have uh, Dr. Mort Orman. Now, Mort is a doctor. He's, um, he really focused on stress relief and stress management. And so this was his first book we came out with called Stop Negative Thinking. It sold, I think, about 10,000 free downloads during the promotion and over 1,000 sales in the week following the promotion. It's called Stop uh, Negative Thinking. It was number one in stress management and number one hot new release as well. Um, next, we have Sarah Patterson. She loves to write about recipes and health and wellness and healthy recipes, things like that. So her book, 51 Fat Burning Juicing Recipes, was number one in non-alcoholic beverages and the number one hot new release. She also had, um, at the same time here, number five on the list was 51 Fat Burning Smoothies. Another recipe book of hers was the number five bestseller and the number two hot new release as well. So she's also kind of dominated those uh, recipe and healthy beverages, uh, best selling list on Amazon. Uh, next we have John Delgadio. Now this guy is a bankruptcy attorney, incredible, brilliant man. 
and he came to me with a book idea for a, a book on how to become fluent in Spanish. And, and I looked at his book, and I kind of thought he was joking because the book is like 25 pages long. I mean, this is not a big book. Like a traditional publisher would look at that book and just laugh him out the door. They would not even talk to him. But I, I engaged him in a conversation and said, look, like, what's really going on here? Like, what this book, what is the book really about? You know, do you think it's long enough to get the message out there? And he said, look, yeah, this book is the complete system I use to teach myself how to come fluent in Spanish. And I can guarantee you that anyone who reads this book and follows the system in it will become fluent over time because they're going to be doing what it takes to become fluent in Spanish. And I said, look, okay, I believe in you. Um, let's, let's do the book together. Let's publish it. Let's market it. And this book is the number one bestseller in bilingual education methods. It was the number one bestseller in Spanish. Um, I mean, better than like traditional Spanish textbooks and everything. I mean, this book is sound like gangbusters on Kindle right now. And it's only 25 pages. So that just goes to show you, you do not need a huge book. You don't need the world's longest novel to become a best-selling author to do really well with ebooks. Sometimes just a short book with the right message in the right way can do really, really, really well. So here's what we're looking for on a client. We want someone who loves to write. Like you better be a serious author if you want to work with us. We're not just looking for people um, who just want to make money. It's not about money for us. It's about having a message and a story to share with the world. Uh, and it's, we especially want clients who want to write multiple books. Like if you don't have, uh, like if you're a fiction writer and you don't have enough stories to write more than one book, um, or if you're a nonfiction writer and you don't have a message that's big enough to encompass more than one book. Then you're probably not the right fit for us, and you know you'll find the publisher is the right fit for you, um, but it's not the right fit for us. We want someone who's really passionate about whatever you want to write about, and you want to write multiple books over your lifetime, and want to be a serious, successful author. So if that sounds like you, um, you know it might be a good fit. So here's what we do for you. Uh, here's the service that we offer. So first of all, we help craft your best-selling book title. We're going to make sure your your book title is one that's actually going to sell your book. So we spend a lot of time on that at the beginning. Because remember, 80% of your success is marketing, and here's my rule. 80% of marketing a book is done before the book is ever published. It's having the right book title, having the right book cover, having the book right book, and having the right message to the market. 80% of that is done before the book is published, so we spend a lot of time before the book is published making sure everything is right. Next, we do editing for you. Now, we do proofreading. We don't do huge structural edits. Um, we don't do massive, massive editing work, so if you need a professional editor, we have referrals for you who do a really great job at a really affordable price. We can really help you get your book ready. Once your book's ready for market, we do all the proofreading, we do all the formatting for Kindle, we do the cover design for you, uh, we do your marketing campaign, we do your book launch, we can even publish it in paperback if you want, that's optional, and a lot more, but really our focus is on marketing before the book is published, making sure everything's right, and then once it's published, getting the right launch campaign for you, getting everything going for you. So here's the deal, here's how it works. We charge a $500 one-time fee for new clients. Now it's just a one-time fee, you never have to pay anything again, it's only for new clients. And that covers your first ebook and every ebook you want forever. So if you publish, we've got some clients who have like 20, 22 ebooks right now. Um, Stephen Tweed has about 22 ebooks with us right now. Uh, it's all free after the first book. We do all the covers for them, all the formatting, all the cover design, all the marketing, it's all free once you're in. Now here's how we work. We split the royalties 50-50. So every every dollar we collect from, from royalties, we give you half of everything we earn, whether it's from movie deals or royalties or international markets, whatever it is, 50-50. So you're earning three to four times as much as you're with a traditional publisher. Remember traditional publishers are paying like 10 to 17 percent and then you have to split a lot of that with your agent. With us, you get half of everything. So it's really like a partnership. We want to create a long-term partnership. Um, that's why we pay, do it this way. Honestly, my, all my colleagues say I'm crazy, I'm insane to pay that much because in the internet marketing world, if, if we do a publishing deal for like a video course, I'm getting 80 to 90 percent. You're only getting 10 to 20 percent as the author, as the creator of that course. Um, so we're paying way more than anyone else does in any kind of similar market, way more than publishers do, uh, traditional publishers, way more than online and digital publishers pay. And we're doing that because, again, I want to help you fulfill your dreams I know if we take all the royalties from you, or the vast majority of the royalties from you, that's going to take you a lot longer to earn a full-time income. So I want to get you to earn that full-time income as fast as possible. That's why we structure it this way. But I want you to understand, look, this is not for everyone. All right, we we handpick our clients. We don't just take on. We I don't just have a big buy button for you right now. You can just click on and pay the 500 bucks and you're in. It just doesn't work that way. So uh, this might be for you if you're really serious about earning a full-time income as an author and you really want to focus on writing as your career. Maybe you have a job, some of our clients have had jobs, and they want to earn a full-time income from their books so they can retire. 
some people are already retired, you know, they're past 65 and they want to write books so they can earn good money in retirement. Um, there's all kinds of reasons and, and that you might want the money or you might want the success as an author, but we want someone who's really passionate. Like, you got to be serious about writing as a career. We want to work with you if, if you're serious about it. So you have to have a book completed, or, or you don't have to, but if you have a book completed already and you want us to do the rest of the work for you, that's another reason this might be a good fit. So I've had, I have one client, we're just getting your books out right now, a Willow Grove Abbey is going to be called, Willow Grove Abbey is going to be called, and uh, it's a historical fiction novel, and she wrote this book 30 years ago. I mean, this book has been denied by publisher after publisher, sitting around for 30 years. I mean, and she is like, this was like her life's work. This lady, she's, she's you know, past 60 now. This is her life's work, and, you know, if she doesn't get this book out there now, it's never going to get out there. It's just, it's going to disappear. No one will ever read it. No one will ever know about it. And that's why I love what I do every day, because I get to take books like that, messages like that, that have never been shared with the world, and share them with the world for the first time, and see, you know, how readers respond. And she, she now, she's so excited, she has plans for more books after this. So, you know, you never know um, what kind of success you can achieve until you actually get out there and start getting your books published and start getting going. And the other reason this might be for you is if you're really ready to get your message out there with the world. Maybe you've waited for 30 years um, like, like her. Maybe you have a new book, or maybe you've been dreaming about being an author your whole life and never really taking that leap. Um, if so, this might be your chance. So here's the next step. So like if you're interested, you have to submit your application. So here's how you do it. Go to tckpublishing.com backslash contact. tckpublishing.com backslash contact. That's the web page where you'll have a form there. You can send us an email. And here's what you need to send us. First of all, you need to send us a brief summary of who you are. Okay, this is two to three sentences. I don't need a novel about your life story. Just two to three sentences, who you are, what you do. Um, you know, just a simple background about you. Next, a uh, brief summary of your book or books. If you have multiple books, that's fine. Just tell us a brief summary. Two, three sentences again. We don't need a lot of novel. We don't need a novel here. Just a little bit, real short, real brief. But let us know about your book. What is it? Who's it for? What's it about? Number three, write a brief summary of why you wrote your book. This is really important. We want to understand like, why, why you wrote the book. What is, why is it you want this message to be out there, this story to be out there? Now, the red right there, who you are, is in red because this is the most important thing. Look, we're not looking for like a one-book deal. Uh, we're not looking for the next best-selling book. We're looking for the next best-selling author. And we want to teach you and groom you and, and shape you and help you grow over years to become the best author you can possibly be. So we're looking for long-term partnerships with authors, not one-book deals or things like that. This is really important that I get to know you and we get to understand you know, who you are, what the message is that you have to share with the world, and how we can help you grow and become a better writer. So if you want to share as well maybe some things you've been struggling with, uh, you need a good editor or things like that, feel free to share that in the email. We will help you get the resources you need. Even if we don't do a publishing deal with you, we'll, we'll refer you to the right people who won't take advantage of you, who will give you a good service at a good price and really take good care of you. So that's what you need to send us. And the final thing you need to do, make sure in your email that you tell me that you heard about me from the Kindle Summit or Eleanor Pryor because that's the only way I can guarantee you'll get the $500 price because the price is going to go up. We have so much demand right now, we just can't handle everyone. Uh, the price will go up. I'm not really sure when. Uh, I kind of don't want the price to go up that much, but we just have to for economic reasons because we're, our team is growing so fast and we have to bring on new people to do all the marketing and all the work for our clients. So um, just let me know that you heard about me from the Kindle Summit or Eleanor Pryor and we'll make sure you get that $500 offer that I shared with you in this video. Um, no matter when you send us that email, We'll give you that offer. We'll honor that for you. Okay. So that's the next steps. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you if you're a serious author. Um, I look forward to reviewing your manuscripts and seeing if it's going to be a good fit. All right. I hope you learned a lot in this video. Hope you have an incredible day and take care. I'll talk to you soon. Oh wait, don't go nowhere. I got questions for you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, you can stop sharing the screen and come back if you want to. Um, my. I, I think I'm in one of your Facebook groups for authors who go in and share their um, their books. I uh -huh. So um, it's really funny because now all of a sudden I'm like putting these pieces together because more it introduced us via email, but I think I've kind of been in contact with you in different areas, like I said. I know I purchased the book, the Twitter book from Kindle um, uh -huh. from you, and then I think I am in the group that you have on Facebook for authors. The Kindle Publishing Bible Group? Um, I don't know if it's a Bible group, but it's a group where um, different authors can go in and say, hey, my, my Kindle book is, is for free today. 
right. um, as a free download. Yeah, I'm in a lot of groups like that, yeah. Okay. Um, and now the affiliate commission says how you you um, mentioned that at the beginning. So basically, when you're you're writing your books, you're you're actually also double dipping too because you're placing affiliate links in them. So if somebody's on the Kindle and they're reading them and they're clicking those links, they're going back. Yeah. So that's one way to do it to put an affiliate link inside your book. Uh, you have to understand you cannot do an Amazon affiliate link. So you cannot do any Amazon affiliate links inside a book. It's legal. It will. It's just a weird thing with Amazon. So you can't do that. But if like, I had an affiliate link to like one of your courses or products, oh, no, I could pr certainly put that in my book. I very rarely do that. What I most often do is I put an offer for a free training or a free video series or a free ebook in my books. So like ebookpublishingschool.com, I have that free video training series. But to get access to it, like you need to put your email in and to get on my email list. You don't subscribe anytime you want, but if you want to watch the videos, you have to be on the list. Um, so I put that offer in a lot of my books in that market. So, uh, so I take them to my squeeze page, and then they're on my email list, and then to my list, you know, I might sell them affiliate products for my own courses or things like that. But to me, really, the email list is is the number one uh, marketing. It's like it's like a guaranteed sales for you. Um, so one of the reasons, like, I've had so much success in my books is because I built an email list. Right now, it's about three thousand people. It's really not that big, um, in, in in the area of authors and and online marketers and bloggers and things like that. So it's not huge. But if I send an email out to my list, I can get 200, 300 sales in one day from one email for a book. And that's enough to get me number one bestseller in most of the categories on Amazon if I do it all in one day. So building an email list, you start small, you grow big over time. Um, I put offers inside my books, usually at the end of the book or the very beginning of my book. I don't put stuff in the middle. I've seen some people who, like, they'll be writing a book and they'll be like, hey, by the way, if you want this free thing, like, in the middle of the book, and, like, I'm, I don't want your marketing in the middle of my book. I want to read. You know, I want to learn. So uh, I, I try to keep it, you know, as non-intrusive as possible, put it at the end or the very beginning of the book. Um, but I want people to understand, like, I'm going to give them, when they're buying the book, they're buying more than the book. Like, they're buying like, a commitment from me to teach them if they want to learn more. Okay, and then um, this question I got from somebody that I haven't had a chance to address, but I think I know the answer to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a book from Mort that he gave to me as a gift, one of his latest books that he gave to me as a gift. Mm -hmm. I went through the book and then I went back into Amazon and it showed that you know that it, it, I had access to it so I was able to leave a review. So mm -hmm. the person's question basically was, which I already answered the answer, <laughs> was that if, if um, they do give people books via Kindle, that then will it show up as a... Um, the review that they do will it show up as a verified purchase? Yeah, if, if it's if if it's a paid Kindle gift, then it'll show up as a verified purchase. Okay. Yeah. Um, if it's so like a lot of times when we email reviewers, um, you know, we ask people to review our book. Uh, well, usually you'll just give them a PDF. It depends. I mean, there's lots of you can give them a PDF, you can give them a dot movie, you can give them a dot, you know, all kinds of things. Um, if you give it outside of the Kindle system, then it won't be a verified review unless they buy it. Um, but honestly, verified reviews are not that big of a deal. Um, you know, you're going to have a mix either way, no matter what you do. So I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Um, obviously, if you have ten reviews that are all five stars and none of them are verified and they all sound like you know your friends and your buddies, then it doesn't look very good. Um, but you know, if you're doing some serious marketing and, and you're a serious person, then you'll get a mix of reviews and it'll all work out fine. Okay, and then. When you talked about giving, you know, the free days on Amazon, yeah. um, giving the books away, I, if I remember correctly, and and when I looked in the um in my KDP Select when I did my free days for my book, I mm -hmm. think I was earning like when they were giving the book away. No, you must have read the report wrong. The Amazon sales reports are kind of complicated, and they'll they'll mix things in different ways. It's kind of weird. Um, okay, but no. You don't, you, don't, you don't earn anything when someone downloads your book for free. Okay, but what you're getting when they're downloading the book from free, though, is, like you said, that word of mouth, um, if they enjoy the book, possible reviews, and then when somebody mm -hmm. else comes and sees your book, you see that. Okay, then exactly. that's, that's good to know because I obviously didn't know that. Okay, so speaking of, and then this would be like basically the last thing, you know, that exercise that you said to do? So I did it kind of in my head. Um, I thought about the last five books that, that I got online, 
and um, mainly I got them because of the different groups that I'm in, or mm -hmm. um, if I saw like an ad somewhere or somebody said something about a book. Mm -hmm. Then, um, so basically, yeah, it was recommended. It was either recommended because it's on link or somebody said something. And then also, um, I did. I went out and recommended it myself. Usually, I'm in the habit of when I see somebody's, um, I go and grab somebody's download book for free, I usually tweet it or I pin it, one of those two things, and then I will share it in, like, in a community myself mm -hmm. to go from there. Because just, just as kind of as a goodwill, I guess, for authors. So that's, that's how what I did with your exercise. Awesome. That was fun. Okay, cool. that's great. So what was that link again? It's um, tckpublishing.com forward slash contact. Exactly. Perfect. All right, well, I, I thought you answered all my questions. That was great. And this was fun. I learned a lot, too. So I'm really excited, especially since I don't know where I got that from that report that was like four subs. But it was really neat to, um, after like about 60 to 90 days, see that first com um, Amazon payment come in. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, you can sign up for EFT. It goes right into your bank account. And uh, the cool thing is, too, like you, get, you can be on the Amazon stores in all different countries, like I said, and they're adding new stores all the time. So when you have like checks coming in, not just from the U.S., but you know the U.K. and Brazil and Japan and Germany and France, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, and then also on the tips, uh, the one thing I see that is like a commonality through the whole thing that everybody's talking about is your book cover. Your book mm -hmm. cover is very important because if they can't read it, then or you can't read it, then you might need to go back and reassess, and that's. The last thing, too, is I do notice, like you said, it's very easy to edit. You just go into the process and it's, it updates. It's, it's amazing. Exactly. Yeah, you can change anything anytime. So you don't have to feel like if this is your first version of your book, you can change your second version tomorrow. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to wait five years to do a second edition. <laughs> yeah, just like it, it, it's the same thing kind of like in the world of Internet marketing where you're like creating products and stuff like that. They always say get over the perfection. Because yeah. if you wait till it's perfect, then you're not just like you said today. You won't get it out. Exactly. If I waited till my books were perfect, I wouldn't. You wouldn't be here from right here. I wouldn't. I'd be nobody. You know, I wouldn't have any books. Right. Well, awesome. Okay, I'm going to end the broadcast. So I want to say thanks for joining us, and and you know, at the Kindle Summit, we're having fun. So hold on a sec.